Instagram. I'm alive and I'm okay, but I will never drink beet juice ever again a day in my life. Anyway, before we get started, I wanted to give a special shout out to, um, shot, shout out to our beautiful YouTube subscriber, Moon Cycle Sis. I got your package. Thank you so much. She sent me, men, brace yourself. <laughs> Okay, she sent me this beautiful packaging. Let's get it out, Nikki. Um, she sent me a, is it a Diva Cup? A Diva Cup. <laughs> I just realized, yeah, I'm showing you guys a Diva Cup. It is what it is. It is what it is. Women use Diva Cups. Um, not all women, but some women do. Moon Cycle, thank you. Um, she makes, what do you make? What did you tell me that you make? She makes... Um, healthy like at home apothecary 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 items um and she also sells uh diva cups but what else do you make you make like uh shea butters and lotions and oils very natural health uh healthy items i have a lot of like natural you know organic healthy um subscribers <laughs> Maybe I need to follow your lead. Anyway, thank you so much, Moon Cycle, for sending uh, this to me. I really, really appreciate it. I can't wait to try it. Um, listen, I've tried Diva Cups before. It's, it's a little bit of a process. So hopefully uh, this works great for me. That was not an ad, but I always love to shout you guys out when uh, you send me things. Um, I know you don't expect me to share it with everybody, but I'm always so thankful that you would, you know, think of me to send me something. And also so blessed to have such creative people wanting to be subscribed to, who are subscribed uh, to Nikki Star TV. I really do appreciate it. So shout out to you, Moon Cycle, and much success in your business. I will link uh, her business down in the description box below. Without further ado, Let's get into the mess of this show. Lord Paige. Paige stresses me out. But you know who is a close second? Eric. Eric, I don't... I don't think he realizes that Virginia is not one of his children. Or that he speaks to her as if he's her father and treats her like a child. I think everybody else sees that but Eric. Because in this episode, all of the couples meet with their like family and friends now that they're moved in to the home that they will be sharing for the next five weeks of this process. And we get to see Eric meet with his friend who, I'm telling you guys, when I was watching this episode, I was like, yep, that's what I said absolutely totally agree like his friend was dropping some huge nuggets of wisdom to eric i don't know if it stuck with him but i hope when he watches this back he really sees that he has a great wise friend because especially when his friend was in the confessional and his confessional with the producers he was just it was like he was giving great advice he was basically telling his friend how to not lose the woman that i believe that he loves and i feel like if eric doesn't untighten up he's gonna lose virginia you have to realize she is almost 10 years younger than him she's in a different season of life so he's going to have to compromise there she as well but i don't think that eric wants to compromise at all he's always like trying to shut her down or shame her for doing some of the things that she does at 26 years old bro listen i know that there are some feelings there and they didn't you know done the Forbidden dance? Is it forbidden dance or the, or the Lombada? One or the other. They did it, okay? And so now there's some kind of physical connection there to match the kind of awkward spiritual, yeah, spiritual connection that they have, right? Or emotional connection that they have, right? But I don't know if it's enough to keep these two together. If anything, I see Virginia leaving because I just don't see Eric wanting to compromise enough i know that eric hyde is going to come for me it is what it is i said what i said let's go i'm playing i love y'all <laughs> unless you're a part of the chris hyde if you're a part of the chris hyde you don't belong here you don't belong here give me a thumbs down and go i know that's the people that's disliking my videos the chris hyde or just chris alone because it's always one dislike so i'm thinking it is chris anyway hey chris give me a dislike and go on because i'm gonna read you in the end if you want to stay stay but if not give me my dislike and go on <laughs> doesn't matter a dislike or a like it still tells youtube that people are watching ha! gotcha i will say this though i was cracking up 
watching Eric's friend listen to him talk about his relationship with Virginia because Eric's friend did not agree with anything that he was saying. He was sitting there listening to Eric talk about Virginia and he was like this the whole time. Everything that Eric said, he disagreed with. If he didn't say it, you could see it all over his face. So I started this episode a little concerned about Eric, right? When we get to the dinner party with the mixture of Eric and Virginia's friends, I was glad that at least high strung Eric got a bit of reassurance from Virginia's friends that she, you know, approached this process with good intentions and really did want to find a partner and not just be on a TV show. But I do agree with Eric, like he said last, ep last episode, she's acting like this is a boyfriend girlfriend thing. Virginia, I won't put this on your age, but I will put it on you. You do give me, you know, or you do act like Eric is like a boyfriend or a spring fling. He's acting more of a husband slash father. You're giving, you know, spring fling, hit it and quit it have a fun time in New Orleans and maybe become Facebook friends later on, probably, you know, follow you on Instagram and that's it. You don't seem as committed to this process, which leads me back to Eric's friend who was telling him, dude, if you don't pull back, you're going to lose her in the nicest way possible. Not for nothing, I'm gonna be real with you. I did feel like uh, Virginia's friend and Cole had a better connection than Eric and Virginia. Eric, watch him because it's always the ones we tell y'all not to worry about that you should worry about vincent and brianna hmm, this is literally my like disney couple <laughs> like this is my disney princess and prince couple i'm gonna be real with you i'm a bit biased to them because i love this couple i really feel like they're the real deal i really feel like they're soulmates they like i said last week they give me uh high school sweethearts i just feel like this is the real deal and i am so enamored with this process because it worked so well for them and it's terrible for chris and Paige. it's such two very different ends of the spectrum with these couples and i am just rooting cheering praying for brianna and vincent because i love this couple and i want them to work i think they're the real deal i think they're the real deal anyway in this episode they are able to get over their issues they're able to come uh, come back to each other and talk Vincent only made it to the parking lot before he turned around. I hope and pray that a producer did not convince him to come back, that he actually wanted to come back and work things out with Brianna. But he came back. They were able to discuss it. Brianna apologized. Vincent expressed a bit more about why he didn't like the things that she said and she did. And they were able to, you know, move past that, but learn from that moment and move forward together in a better direction. And I am just praying because they'll have more dust-ups right this is very early in the relationship they were strangers like what two weeks ago so this is very very early in their process but I'm hoping like what Brianna said she was just like I don't want you to walk out I want you to stay and I want us to work it out I'm hoping that it like if, if it's something bigger that it doesn't bring about a bigger reaction from Vincent because listen, I don't have the right to say that what happened with them was very small because I'm not Vincent. I don't know how he feels. And also, I don't know if he had taken so many little side comments from Brianna before he blew up, right? However, in the context of the show and the way it was filmed, it did look like a really small issue that he escalated with his behavior. So I'm hoping that these two are watching and learning each other and being just very careful in this, you know, point in their relationship. Cause you gotta work, walk on eggshells. You're just getting to know each other. You're married, but you're just getting to know each other. Brianna and Vincent, please, please. You're the only good thing we have going on on this show. Like everybody else, let's be real. Nobody's gonna be together besides Brianna and Vincent. I just don't see it for anybody else. I really, really don't. So right before Brianna and Vincent have the dinner party with their family and friends, you know, mixed together, uh, Vincent meets with his uh, really good friend and he tells him the situation that happened with him and Brianna. And can I just say on this episode, I was, um, unfortunately, I was very shocked, very shocked and thoroughly surprised by the amazing men that the men on this show have in their lives. Like the men were giving their friends such great advice and really able to honestly see the side of the woman. I did not think 
that these friends were like putting it on for the camera. They were dropping great wisdom to their friends from Eric's friend to um, Vincent's um, friend. And then later on, we will get into Chris's friends because girl, what? <laughs> girl, what? we will get into that. But I was just really shocked by how, how amazing the guys were. No shade. I was waiting for a friend to be like, oh, what? Really? Get rid of her. You can do better, dude. I can't believe you in this process anyway. I thought you was going to be a bachelor to the day you die. No shade, but I was waiting for that. And I'm so thankful that I never got that. I was so impressed with the men on this show. Look, not the men, the friends of the men on this show. So impressed with the community of men that they keep. How are y'all like this with these great guy friends, especially Chris? I'm not surprised that Vincent has a friend like that, but I'm just like, wow, you got some great guy friends. More of this. Let's put more men like this on the show or just, you know, on reality TV in general. Because I was just like applauding everything that they were saying to their friends and the men were not holding back. They were not trying to curb their tongue, but they were also speaking to their friends and love. Just really impressed, extremely impressed with the um, friends of the men on this show. So anyway, uh, Vincent's friend, checks him in kindness and love and he talks to him and he's just like listen this is your wife now you know you're saying that you leave and you went to your house like no this is the house that you have with her you can't walk out on your wife when things get difficult you made a commitment you have to stick with this you have to cover her like the, oh my god oh my god he was so good but like, i was like i will say this okay friends okay so after that vincent gets some encouragement and clarity and, you know, a better direction on how he's going to move forward in his relationship from, you know, the words of wisdom that he received from his friend. So then he takes that energy and takes it to the, uh, the dinner party that he has with Brianna and their friends and family. I thought it was really cute that Brianna was a little nervous and like, you know, not quite herself, but like a better version of herself and like really, you know, walking on eggshells in the sweetest way because she really wanted uh, Vince's mother, Vince's mother to accept her. And at the end, when she said, so glad you're a part of my family, I love them. This dinner party was great. I love how everybody just blended so well together. I loved how when they were playing this game, he was rubbing her leg. She was grabbing his inner thigh. Oh, I wanna be invited to the baby shower. They have to work. Lifetime, I don't care what you do, you gotta invest in this couple because they have to work. We are all invested in this love story. It has to work. This is our, what is it, Lauren and Cameron? This is our, Lauren, our um, Meredith Blonde site? Blonde love? Blonde date? What was, oh my God, it was my favorite show. Blind, love is blind, ciao. Brianna and Vincent, Lauren and Cameron, they have to work. They have to work. Haley and Jacob. Haley, I want you to get free. I want you out of the situation. You're not happy, right? And although I feel so bad for Jacob because I know that he really wants this to work, I, um, I'm i not necessarily sure that he wants it to work with Haley. I think he's just ready to be a wife and a dad. And I think he wants to make it work with her since he has somebody who is feeling, uh, currently feeling the position uh, of wife and possibly a future mom. But Haley is not happy. And I don't know if she's staying in the process because of the show or producers are convincing her to do it or if there's some like monetary benefit from her staying in this relationship. I don't know what it is, but I want you to be free, sis. You're not happy. And I mean, it doesn't take an expert to see that you are not invested in this experiment, this marriage, whatever it may be. And I just, y'all told me to watch this freaking show, right? Y'all told me, oh, experts and pastors and matchmakers, they all, you know, do their research for months and they put these couples together and they know so much. They're so wise. Poppycock. They don't know what the hell they're doing because who was that pastor dude that met with um, Haley and Jacob? Her body language alone, bro, you could tell that she did not want to be here. Why didn't you advise her and be like, you know what? You're not happy in this situation. I don't advise you two to move forward. I think these experts and pastors and matchmakers, I think they see what couples will work and what couples will not work. And I think what they do because it's a TV show is give us a couple that they know will work, right? Then I think the rest are experiments. And then I think we get one or two who are just awful matches and they put them together for entertainment. I honestly feel like that's what it was with Chris and Paige. I think Brianna and Vincent, they knew that that 
was going to work. Eric and Virginia Entertainment, Haley and Jacob Entertainment, Clara and Ryan definitely entertainment and Chris and Paige entertainment. I don't think that they thought that any of these couples will work besides Brianna and Vincent. I really, really don't. I think this is just entertainment. And I think if some couples work out to win for them, right? I don't think that's their intention. That's show business. And let's get to their dinner party. Again, her body language, she's uncomfortable. She's sitting on the couch, stiff, making eyes whenever he comes over. Her friends are, you know, being polite, but they're obviously seeing that their home girl is not okay with the situation. I want you out of this. But then Haley, you also have to say something too, because you're still there. You're still telling this man you want to work it out, probably still having sex with him and confusing the situation. So yes, you know, I do think that the show puts you in a situation for entertainment, but you're grown. You don't have to go with the process and they are not forcing you to sleep with this man. You are doing that and then blaming that on being drunk. And you're saying that to us, not to him. So you're confusing him every time. Listen, y'all know I'm rotten for the women on this show, right? But the ladies, y'all have to one, stop confusing the situation and two, speak up. If you're not happy, if you want something else, if you want to be removed from the process, say that. Stop staying in situations that does not benefit you or does not make you happy and then doing one thing with your partner and saying a different thing to us in the confessional. I'm confused, Haley, so I know Jacob is confused. Clara and Ryan, Ryan, please have sex with Clara. I don't know, you know, to be quite honest with you, not trying to be crass or anything, I don't know if you're like, you know, I don't want to do the motion, but are you like fondling her vagina? <laughs> what are you doing to her? Because she keeps on saying, I'm sexually frustrated, but you know, he is taking care of me in other places. You know, we are doing everything but. What the hell is everything but? Because, you know, Ryan is a church boy. And you know, a lot of them, you know, <laughs> no shade, you know, do butt stuff to, to like stay out of the vagina. Because, you know, it's a blood covenant and that's sacred and all that stuff. So I don't know. Like, girl, are you getting anal? Is he playing with the um, clitoris? Is, is he munching you? <laughs> like, what, what is happening? Because you keep on saying, we're doing everything but. So I, are, are, are y'all doing everything but or are y'all grinding on each other? Because I don't know what it is. You're confusing. <laughs> you, I don't know if y'all confused, but she's confusing me. Because she's like, I'm sexually frustrated. So are you penally frustrated? Or is the foreplay that you're doing setting you up to a point where you can never fully get to where you need to get? You need the rest of it. Am I making sense what I'm saying? <laughs> Cause I'm just, I'm real confused, sis. I'm real like, what, what, what's going on? You're sexually frustrated, but then you say to us in the confessional, we're doing stuff, but I'm sexually frustrated. So what are y'all doing? Y'all playing Uno? Y'all grinding on each other? Y'all making out? Or is he give, is he giving you a hickey? Ryan gives me a hickey kind of guy. Like, is that what he? What is it? You gotta give us details. And here's why. You're telling us something without telling us something. We need clarity. So, Clara and Ryan uh, are having their dinner party with their family and friends. Clara is telling every and anybody <laughs> that she is sexually frustrated, okay? Not only is she telling all of the world that is watching this show, she's telling everybody who comes to that dinner party, hi, here's our place. I'm sexually frustrated. Hey, do you want some avocado dip? I just made it. I'm sexually frustrated. Hi, the bathroom is down the hall. Guess what? I'm sexually frustrated, girl. And I think, you know, woman to woman, I know what you're doing. You're telling everybody so that it can get back to him. So that he could be like, oh my goodness, I had no idea you were sexually frustrated. Let's, you know, do some vaginal stuff. <laughs> I don't know. But like she, she really is. So she's telling every and anybody who would listen. So Ryan, I know that you told her you didn't want your business out there on the street. But baby, not only is it on Front Street, it's in the neighborhood, it's in the city, it's in the state, it is in the continent. She is telling all of your tea. You better do more than fondle her because I feel like if you don't put out, Clara gonna go off the deep end. She gives me, and there's nothing wrong with that, but I think that Clara is the kind of person who needs that physical affection right off the bat, right? That will That's something that she needs to make herself feel wanted and desired by her partner. Ryan is the opposite of that. He moves 
very slow and he becomes intimate when he knows for sure. He needs all of that other, that emotional, that spiritual, all of that building up to that. Then the, like the physical thing is the last for him, but the physical thing is the first for Clara. Here again is where I say, again, this is entertainment, right? Because you don't need to put me in a relationship to challenge me. Who are you? You ain't God. You need to find me the right match, somebody who will work for me and fill up my love tank and meet me where I'm at and I can do the same for them. But when you're on a TV show and you have this really straight edge guy who is, you know, very spiritual and by the book on a lot of things and takes his time, you put him with this tornado in a good way, Clara, tornado of a woman who cannot be tamed, who moves fast right off the bat. What do you get? You get conflict. And this is what we have here because that's like interesting to watch. You see these two very different people conflicting because listen, for the experience of the show, like I said, good TV. In real life, Clara wouldn't go for Ryan and Ryan wouldn't go for a Clara. This is not the magic school bus, right? They don't need to learn each other and teach each other anything because they're like total opposites, right? It's like, well, maybe Clara needs to move slow and maybe Ryan needs to pick up. Maybe not. Maybe it's okay with them being the way they are and maybe they should be with people who accept them just the way they are. Cause these two not gonna make it. These two are not gonna work. Here is why Ryan is not going to stay with Clara. He is doing everything but sealing the deal by sleeping with Clara and then binding that blood covenant. That's, it's like Christian talk, that's what it is. Um, it's called the blood covenant because the man is breaking a hymen and everybody is supposed to be, you know, virginal. So, so that's the whole blood uh, covenant thing. Follow me, heathens. <laughs> but that's what it is. Like, I feel like he's doing everything but. So his thing is, if I'm not happy and I wanna stay out of this process, at least I didn't have sexual intercourse with her, but you already entered her sexually some kind of way. If you're making out with her, if you're fondling her, that is, you know, some kind of intercourse, some kind of intimacy, Ryan. So you're not out of the woods. You're not safe in God's sight. You know what I mean? You did some things to get this woman to this point, but you're not going beyond that because you want to feel safe when you exit and be like, well, this is why I did not have sex with her because I did not feel like we were where we needed to be as a married couple. So I'm going to separate from this. Clara, listen, although I feel like Ryan is cheating you, I'm glad he's not having sex with you because I feel like that will complicate the situation a bit more for you for where you're at because you and Ryan are not in the same place. I feel like you will stay and want to make this work. I don't see that for him. I see him wanting to, you know, start a relationship and pursue a relationship with someone who is where he's at because he needs to be in control and he will not be able to control a woman like you. Now it's time to get into the foolishness with Chris and Paige. Um, so Paige finally found her voice. She realizes that she is married to a, a demon and she's finally waking up. To be quite honest with you, Paige, I don't know if you really woke. I don't know if you're doing this for us because the way you have been going back to this man when he has showed you who he was from day one, I'm just not sure that you're quite out of it yet. I want you to be, but no shade, sis. Let's be real um, with you. We love you. We are all supporting you. We are rooting for you. We want you to win. But we got to be honest here. You two can't short of a six pack because you keep on running back to this man and none of us know why. None of us get it. He got a texturized box, hit, and none of his businesses are successful. Girl, you can do better on your worst day. You could do better on your worst day. Anyway, in this episode, Chris and Paige meet with their friends as well. Uh, we just focus on Chris. I don't know why we didn't meet with any of Paige's friends. In this episode, Chris meets with his friends and they think that he's going to tell them that him and Paige are still together. He lets them know that uh, he is going to divorce Paige. Before we get into their reactions, praise the Lord, Pastor Dwight. Praise the Lord. Amen. Amen. And does Chris's friend, who's not the pastor, doesn't he give you a little bit of Morris Chestnut? Chris, why you got these fine friends? You don't deserve these fine friends who are good men. Oh my God. Where are they? Where are they? These are gorgeous men who are good men. Because Chris tells them that him and Paige are getting divorced and he tells them why. Their faces, 
the disappointment on them. You cannot fake this, guys. They were extremely disappointed in Chris. Pastor Dwight. <laughs> Amen. He puts his head down in disappointment. Chris's other friend, um, not quite Morris Chestnut, but just enough Morris Chestnut for me. He looks away because he's just like, dude, really? Like, they can't believe it. They cannot believe it. So Pastor Dwight <laughs> starts talking to Chris and he's just like, this is probably one of the worst decisions you ever made. You never even gave it a shot, but you were intimate with this woman. He was like, I'm gonna be real with you, brother. You're wrong. And then I see his friend, right? Who's like squirming. And I'm like, are you gonna disagree with <laughs> Pastor Dwight? <laughs> and not quite more with Chestnut was just like, yeah, he's right. I was like, oh, all right. <laughs> Calm down, girl. All right. He was like, yeah, this is a really good woman. Like, he was just talking about how amazing Paige was and how Chris is missing out. And so they both were, like, going back and forth, letting Chris know basically that he's Basora. Great friends. Great friends. I don't know how y'all became uh, friends with Chris, but they were giving him some great sound advice and still doing it in love, and he didn't deserve any kindness. But they gave it to him, right? Chris, like the child he is, oh, I'm done. I'm done having this conversation. Why? Because they're checking you. You do not like being held accountable for any of your actions. And it seems like your family never made you accountable for any of those things because your father sat there at your wedding day and lied about the kind of man you were. And then up the page said, oh, he's banging me and disrespecting me in the same breath. His father goes, oh, that's not the son I raised. That's absolutely the son you raised. And dare I say, he probably watched you do the same thing to his mother. This is learned behavior. This is learned behavior. Or there is something in his, in his environment that he has seen that has crafted him to be the man that he is. But it's something in that home. It is something in that home. And they're acting like they're the freaking Obamas. No, y'all done did something. Or this man has seen some things go down in that home. And you have either tried to not acknowledge it or try to, you know, throw God in it to try to manipulate the situation to make him believe that that is okay. And now he's doing this as a grown man. And y'all getting on TV saying, oh, that's not my son. That's all. Oh, that's not the son that I raised. And then who is it? Who is it? Let's get ear to hear. Who is it? Hey, Pastor Dwight. What church? Is, is, is he, um, is it, is this? Does he have a church online or is he like preaching local? I think it's Pastor Dwight. He's probably married. Don't know a man that look like that and is a pastor is, is single. Yay, married. Paige, listen. The ship has sailed with Pastor Dwight. <laughs> you know what? The pastors today are getting, you know what? I'm not even going to speak that. Nikki. Do better, do better. I'm checking myself in this moment. I'm checking myself. Amen, hallelujah. I pray for that marriage right now in the mighty and the matchless name of Jesus. But if he has a twin brother, Lord, send him my way. Anyway, Paige, not quite Morris Chestnut, Chris's friend. He was bigging you up. The way he was talking about you, I was just like, are you single, sir? Because if not, me and Paige are, are looking, okay? Me and Paige are available, but Paige, I like you and I'll let you have a, um, a go with him first to see if y'all work. If not, excuse me. Anyway, the way he was talking about Paige, I was just like, you know what? This seems like this may work, Paige. This may work because he was just really speaking amazing. I think he called her a gem of a woman. Girl, slot in his DMs. Who cares about Chris? He didn't care about you. Go after what you want. And that man seems like he wants you. Bring him on Married at First Sight. Why not? So Chris, the demon, after he meets with his gorgeous friends who try to hold him accountable, he decides to call Paige and say, hey, I want you to meet with the mother of my child. What? And Paige is like, oh yeah, let me, um, let me think about it. And then later agrees to meet with him. What? Why would you do that? Why would you even give him that camera time? Because this is what Chris wants. He wants attention, which is why he did this show. He did not do this show so that he could find a partner or a wife. He did this show because he wants to be a reality TV star. He wants the attention. I don't think he intended on it going this bad for him. And I think he knew that he was going to come on this show and make a name for himself. And boy, did he make a name for himself. So anyway, Chris Page and the baby mother, they all sit down to me at first. I was a little bothered by the baby mom, right? Or Chris's ex, who was 
<laughs> I just, that, that bothered me, right? Because I was like, sweetie, you ain't no bras. You are not no bras. So I don't know why you're laughing, acting like you're so much better. Like it was bothering me. But later I realized that she was just uncomfortable because Chris had told her one thing. And then uh, she finds out that um, it's a totally different story with Paige. I realized why Paige agreed to meet with Chris and the ex because Paige was ready to burn it all down, right? Chris thought that Paige was in the same space that she was at when they were in the um, driveway. And after he said that, I'm afraid of falling in love with you. And he was like, so, you know, I guess I'll get my bags and leave. And Paige was like, all right, bye. <laughs> So I think he thought that she was still there, right? But I think since they've had some time, she thought about some things, probably talked to some girlfriends, her mom, you know, some people that she respects and loves her and gave her some sound advice and being away from the situation. She probably had some time to just dwell on everything and she realized that she was done wrong. So I think she agreed to meet with him because she wanted to burn it all down in the sweetest way because that is who Paige is. Because when she sits down with them, she's so kind complimenting her, you know, complimenting the both of them. When they walk in, she's like, oh, you guys look so jazzy. And I'm like, why are you telling him that he looks jazzy? And why are you not throwing grits on him? Throw hot grits on him. If you don't have no grits, do you have a taser? Like, girl, what are you doing? She was just being too kind, too kind for me. Anyway, so uh, Chris is not talking. He's leaning back. He's sitting watching his woman like he the man. And Paige and the ex start talking, right? So when they start comparing notes, the ex realizes that Chris has just been lying to her the whole time, right? Because she was just like, I didn't even know he was married until I contacted him and let him know that I was pregnant. And then she was just like, I want you to be very clear. I want you to understand this right now. I'm not trying to get back with uh, Chris. Like there's just, there's not, there's nothing there. Like we are not getting back together. So then Paige was just like, oh really? Because that's what he told me. And the ex was like, oh really? And then Paige was just like, I couldn't believe that he could do something like that to me when I also thought that I was probably pregnant. And the ex was like, oh really? And Paige was like, really? And Chris was like, I really love the fact that this did not go the way that he wanted it to go. Because he thought that he was going to sit on camera looking like the man while his women fight over him and his women, his women that he thought that he had actually linked up and got him together. I loved it. I loved it. I wanted Paige to be a little bit more, you know, um, gutter, but that's just not who she is. Paige is a good person. And not saying that you're, you know, not a good person if you're gutter, because I'm gutter. I'm a good person. But she just... She just uh, did not uh, want it to go that way. She wanted it to go her own way. And I'm really proud of her. I do think that there's a shot that she would get back with Chris because from what we've seen on this show, that's all I can go off of Paige. This new Paige, we never met her, right? We're meeting her right now and I don't have much to go off of. So I do think that you probably might get back with him. Who knows? Who knows? But this meetup was an absolute nightmare for Chris. How do I know it was a nightmare? Because he got up and walked out. Like at first he started getting nasty with Paige. And he was just like, yeah, well, I'm going to be good. I'm going to be good. I'm going to go eat my dinner and read my Bible. Kept on bringing up like these like biblical terms and scriptures. And just all kinds of like black Christian terminology. I'm going to be good. And God is great. God got me. Boy, what are you talking about? You created this mess. God don't got you in this mess. This is what you created. Chris and Paige, this is the only thing that I think they match in is their um, blind, foolish faith, right? Like um, you can walk with the Lord, right? As, you know, as how we are taught in the Christian community to walk with the Lord and absolutely walk by faith and not by sight, but do not be foolish. They are both very foolish. They put God's name and God's stamp on a, of approval on stuff that don't have God in it, on just foolish things. How Paige is saying, I'm going to stay in this process because I know that God put me in this process for a reason. No, Paige, these vultures in reality TV took somebody very vulnerable who wanted to be married and used her faith to manipulate her, to get her on this show, to be a whole fool for a man that they knew was going to mistreat her. I know they say that this is not who Chris was when they were interviewing him, but I just cannot believe that he hid this person the whole time. Y'all saw some things. 
and y'all still continue to pursue him and cast him on the show because you knew that he was grimy and slimy and that he would get the show trending, which he's actually doing. Anyway, the ladies link up and they drag Chris together. Chris is upset, so he gets up and leaves and stops filming. And the ex is like, Chris, are you serious? <laughs> okay, whatever. Um, anyway, so her and Paige keep on talking. They leave on a nice note. They compliment each other. They say that they're beautiful. They, de you know, defended each other from Chris and his ways. And it just didn't work out the way that he wanted. And I'm glad. I'm absolutely glad. One for Paige. One for Paige. Girl, it's been a long time coming, but I'm proud. I'm very, very proud. And I think next week he's going to try to get you back. And it seems like you walk off. I hope you stay walking off. I hope you don't come back to that foolish situation. Before I close out, Chris, how in the hell did you get this caliber of women? He has some great women. And I'm like, how were they available to you? Oh my gosh. Where is the bar lady? Say it with me. Hell, hell. And far too many of us are willing to get third degree burns on our body to go and get that bar to get some kind of a man. The devil is a liar. Do better. Do better. Anyway, that's it for me. That's all I wanted to talk about. If you like what you see here, please like, comment, subscribe, and share. Also, if you want to chat about uh, what I talked about in uh, this review in the comments section below, get on down there, tag your girl, and let's have a good old conversation about this messy show called Married at First Sight. Thank you for all of your support. And once again, please like, comment, subscribe, and share. And I will see you in another video for something else. Just know it'll be funny. Love ya. Bye.